Hey folks, TJ here, and I'm back with the final episode for WWE Rollback, and this is it. And a well good way to wrap this entire thing up than with the very last preview that WWE ever produced. And that is Greed, which took place in March 18th of 2001. Alright, my goodness, feels like a long time ago, okay? And uh, let's see, uh, my final thoughts, let's see. Well, final WWE pay-per-view, did it live to its hype? Mm, not really. Although there, there were some standout matches, the main event was somewhat worth it. But let's see. What, I'm, I'm going to dive right into it, okay? Uh, main event, right here. It was for the world title. It was Diamond Dallas Page taking on the champion, Scott Steiner. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It was more or less a fight than a match. And, like, it just, while well, the rules were it was anything goes, there had to be a winner. And, like, they just fought over that building, actually. And it was... It was a good, good for what it was worth. Um, DP Pub, an incredible fight. Uh, Steiner Pub, an incredible fight. Um, there was there was a prequel cool moment where I'm gonna spoil this, where Steiner gets put to a table. Actually, I think uh, fans went and eat that up. Um, but uh, it was it was a good match nonetheless. Um, not DP's best, but I've seen him as best. Um, this um kind of fell a little flat, but then again, they're trying to build Steiner as the next big thing for WCW. And, of course, obviously, did not really work. As you know, what would happen a couple weeks later, I'm sorry, would fall. But, anyway, I'm getting off topic. Uh, the rest of the card, uh, let's see. Not, no particular order. For the U.S. Championship, it was Booker T taking on the champion, Scott Steiner. Um, not the best U.S. title match. Um, Booker T did pop a good fight. A Steiner, um, uh, Rick Steiner was kind of showing signs of ring rust because I, 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 don't, I don't know. It, like, uh... It was like they they were building up for something good, but it was kind of falling a little flat. But what the heck? Nothing else too special. Not I've seen I've seen better U.S. title matches in my opinion. All right. Then we had the cruiserweight tag team tournament finals. Yeah. Um. This was possibly the shortest lived championship in the company's lifespan. Actually, it was. Listen to this. It was Billy Kimmon and Rey Mysterio taking on Kid Romeo and Primetime Elix Skipper. And, I I will admit it was actually a very good tag team bout actually, and uh, Kevin and Mysterio, dude, you get, you get those two in a tag team bout, you get something amazing actually. And those guys know each other real well; they're good friends, and they put up a really good match against these two young guys and Kid Romeo on primetime Elix you know, Skipper. Yeah, and of course, oh man, oh man, I'm primetime Elix you know, Skipper. So a good, amazing town actually. Eventually, he would move on to TNA. Of course, what's he doing now? Uh, uh, oh no, no, he, no! I, I kind of miss having him around. Okay, which, which could uh, return to the ring. I, I think he's still in the business. But anyway, again, off topic. Uh, on the our noble matches, the cruiserweight championship, in my opinion, match of the night, almost stole the show. Um, Cruz Chavo Guerrero took on Sugar Shane Helms. <laughs> Sugar Shane Helms. Yeah, um, from uh, a member of uh, Three Counts. Remember that gimmick? You know the. Boy band gimmick, actually, an amazing contest. Actually, like La High Flying Chavo as absolute prime. Uh, Shane Helms, amazing product. Uh, it was an amazing contest. Um, uh, let's see if I compare it to any of the Arkansas Ray title matches. Not as good, but but it was still something nonetheless. All right. Um, and then here's a match in my opinion, possibly the worst match. It just went by way too quick. Barely lasted a minute. It was for the Tag Team Championship. It was Lex Luger and Buff Bagwell, collectively known as Tully Buff, taking on the champions of Sean O'Hare and Chuck Palumbo, who won the um, Tag Team Gold, I think, a little, a little bit prior to this event. And uh, they hyped up too much, so too, a little too much. And then all of a sudden, here's the match. It just went by way too quick. And I was like, what the frick happened? Really? Uh, they wasted all that time time with a pre-match promo with uh, Luger and Bagwell, you know, saying, oh, we're going to do this. All of a sudden, and, and they come. Matches over. What the hell? Seriously. What they come made it something. Okay, they come made it last a little longer. I have no idea what they were thinking. But then again, this is uh this is WWE. It's later years and another thing shot out by Vince Russo. But anyway, if you want to hear me uh, rip on Vince Russo watch another video. But anyway, our matches on the show, um two our interesting standout matches for me was um uh, was this. It was Dusty and Dustin Rhodes taking on Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett. Can't believe I'm saying that in, in, in a sentence. Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett teaming together. Interesting enough, um, since those two were part of a of a faction at that time, it was like it was like it was like a big like a sister seven kind of thing. It was like a almost like a, it was like before what would eventually become known as um 
Immortal in TNA, but of course, uh, of course, uh, I'm getting a little off topic. Well, if, if you can't th think about it, it was like seven different guys with, with their hopes of, you know, taking over a company. It was really kind of like Immortal. Um, it was uh, it was those two, uh, Tully Buff, and I think the Steiners. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but anyway, it was an interesting match, but the concept was kind of funny. Where the loser had to kiss, the losing team had to kiss the opposing team's ass. It was a kiss my ass match, technically. And Dusty and Dusty Rhodes ends up giving Jeff Jarrett a steak face. <laughs> was that, it was entertaining to see that, but technical wise, it was not a good match, but it was just entertaining nonetheless. And literally, you just see the look on Jeff Jarrett's face. It was like, my God! <laughs> oh my God, you got, you had to, to see it just to believe it. But anyway, um, the other standout match that piqued my interest was this. Bam Bam Bigelow taking on Sean Stasiak. And uh, not Bam Bam's best match, but um, he would put up a good fight, but match went by way too quick, right? They could have made it a little longer. Um, story, they could have built it up a little better, but it was one of those one of those filler matches. And, of course, what do you expect? This is WCW where they put in filler matches, which, in my opinion, could have saved for another freaking day, like Nitro or Thunder. But anyway, other than that, was it enough to see WCW? Um, some of these matches kind of... Did, but in a way, not really. But I'm, I'm going to point something out here. The final gate or attendance was 5,030 people. All right. Can we? I'm saying this. That is the that is possibly the lowest attendance record I've ever heard. What lowest attendance record I've ever heard for a pay per view? Good God. But anyway, um, it lived up to its kind of lived up to its hype. It was a good main event. Some matches they could just gotten rid of, but um, uh, they, or they need to work on definitely, especially the tag team title match. They could just literally like forget that match. But anyway, um, for what it was worth. It kind of ended on a bang for WCW because eventually two weeks later, um, WCW is closed. It's bought by WWE, and that's it. His history, as they say, is is let's say is history. Ugh, I can't even speak anymore. But anyway, I guess this gets my final oral reading up. Seven and a half fat ten. All right, so that does it for WCW rollback. But stick around, guys, for for something special. All right, take care, folks.